In this video, we're going to introduce a new technique for proving that some problems are undecidable. This involves reducing one problem into another. So some problems are undecidable. And our question is, how can we prove that they are undecidable? And with this technique of redu reducibility, we'll show that we can uh, prove that uh, some problems are undecidable, and we'll do it by reducing one problem into another problem. With this technique, we can achieve some mar remarkable results. Consider two Turing machines. Do they do the same thing? That is, are they equivalent? Do they accept the same language? This turns out to be undecidable, and in this series of videos we'll show the proof for that. How about a program? Does it always halt? Is, is a particular program guaranteed to halt? Does a particular algorithm always stop? Or might it sometimes loop forever? That's an important question to ask if you're a programmer, but it turns out that that problem is, in general, undecidable. What about something that might seem a little bit simpler? Given a particular Turing machine, does that Turing machine accept any string? Is the language defined by that Turing machine empty or not? Well, it turns out that that is also undecidable. Before we begin, on a lighter note, here's a little story. An engineer and a mathematician were hiking when they were suddenly attacked by a bear. The engineer grabbed a stick and yelling and stabbing wildly with a stick, he managed to fight off the bear. The next day, these two were uh, hiking again, and once again they were attacked by a bear. This time, the mathematician picked up a nearby stick and handed it to the engineer, thereby reducing the problem to a previously solved problem. We're going to try to do the same thing as the mathematician did with the stick and the bear. What we want to do is reduce a hard problem into an easier problem. Um, that's the technique of, of reduction. Okay? A solution to the easier problem, then, can be used to solve the harder problem. And so let's look at reduction of one problem into another first. And here's a kind of an informal example to give you maybe a little intuition. Let's say that the problem you want to solve is to fly from Portland, Oregon on the west coast to Cairo, Egypt. Okay? There's, there are no direct flights. Um, so this is somewhat of a hard problem to find a, a way to fly from Portland to Cairo. However, we know that there are some direct flights from Portland to New York. Okay, so we can get to New York. We know how to get to New York. That's, that's pretty straightforward. So in a sense, we, have, we can use those flights to reduce the harder problem into an easier problem. Okay, the easier problem is to find a flight from New York to Cairo. So it, it's still maybe hard to find such a flight, but it's, appear, it's easier probably to find a flight from New York to Cairo, Egypt. So if we can find a solution to this easier problem, we can use the information that we already had about the direct flights from Portland to New York to solve the harder problem. Okay, so that's sort of an informal idea of reducing one problem into another problem. Now let's reverse the logic and show how we can use this technique of reduction to prove that some problems are unsolvable. Uh, we can reduce a hard problem into an easier problem, but what if the hard problem is known to be unsolvable? Well, then the easier problem must also be unsolvable, because if we could solve the easy problem via the reduction, we know that we could so solve the harder problem. But if we know the harder problem is itself unsolvable, then that implies that there cannot be a, a solution to the easier problem. And you can substitute decidable here. If the hard problem is known to be undecidable, then we can conclude that the easier problem must also be undecidable. Let me, I, this is sort of an, an example, an informal example of the reverse logic. It's not a, a perfect uh, example. Uh, but maybe it'll give you the idea of what's going on. Um, let's assume that the hard problem is to live forever, which we somehow know a priori to be impossible. We've somehow proven that's impossible, or we're, we're given that that's an impossible feat. So the easier problem might be to stop aging. 
Okay. If we could find a solution to the stop aging problem, if we could figure how to stop out how to stop aging, then we could solve the live forever problem. But since we know that living forever is impossible, we can conclude that it's impossible to stop aging. As I say, I, that analogy has maybe some uh, flaws in it. Um, but now let's turn and look more precisely at the logic we will be using. We'll start with our known fact that the acceptance problem for Turing machines is undecidable. In a previous video, we've proved that using a different technique. So this is a given known fact. This is our hard problem. Now, what about some other problem, P? Is P undecidable? Okay, we might have a theorem that says P is undecidable, and the question is how do we prove that? And so here is the approach that we're going to take to proving that P is undecidable. It's a proof by contradiction, essentially. We begin by assuming that P is decidable. Okay, so we make this assumption and then we'll reach a contradiction. Remember, we're trying to prove that P is not decidable. Then, in the second step, we figure out how to reduce the acceptance problem for Turing machines into our candidate problem P. The acceptance problem for, T for Turing machines is our hard problem and P is our easier problem. Okay, if we could solve P, then we could use it to solve the acceptance problem for Turing machines. Remember the acceptance problem for Turing machines, what that is? Given a Turing machine and a candidate string like W, does that Turing machine accept when applied to the input W? And uh, we have determined that that's not decidable. Okay, so we're going to in this proof technique, we'll reduce the acceptance problem for Turing machines into P and use a solution of P to solve the acceptance problem. Or more precisely, we're going to assume that P is decidable and we're going to use the decidability of P to find or create an algorithm to decide the acceptance problem for Turing machines. Remember, we, it's not decidable, so we're working toward a contradiction. But we're going to assume that P is decidable, and we're going to use its decidability to prove that ATM is decidable. And we're going to do it by building a Turing machine to decide the acceptance problem for Turing machines using the Turing machine that decides P as a subroutine. Right? If P is decidable, then it's then we know there is some Turing machine that will decide it. There is a decider for P. And so we're going to show how we can use that decider for P as a subroutine when we construct a decider for the acceptance problem for Turing machines. But, of course, we know that a decider for the acceptance problem for Turing machines cannot exist. So we've come to our contradiction, and then we can go back and realize that our assumption was incorrect and in fact we're proving that P is undecidable. This is the general logic of the proofs by reduction that we're going to be using.